<laughs> oh man. Well, I got up at, I don't know what time I got up, five o'clock, so I didn't have to go too far away. Go try this creek. It was full of fish. And uh, there's a large, a handful of fairly large steelhead in there. And I ran the camera this morning and then once it got light out and there was actually, uh, it was loaded up with everything. There's some big spring salmon in there, some big Chinook, or big coho salmon. And in Alaska they call them silver salmon, the coho, or they call Chinook salmon king salmon. <clears throat> so they, they were in there. There's fish of every age in that pool. And there's also a large number of big steelhead. And I couldn't suck them into biting. <laughs> Excuse me, but I did catch a... Uh, I did catch a coho on there and that was kind of fun. And I'm just trying to deal with this editing program. It's driving me freaking crazy. I think it's a laptop. So I wanted to share a bunch of this stuff and it is taking me forever. It's crazy. It's so frustrating because I'm not used to it. And it, it's not like I've got enough, I need my time quadrupled up sitting here, right? But anyway, that's what the pool looked like. And, uh, This is where I got one on. Bam! It took me for a little bit of a run up and down the river. <laughs> I almost fell down and wiped out and fell in. But it was fun. Anyway, if I can, I will, uh, I'll incorporate this into the video or else I'll just have to do it. I don't know. A different video. Hold on. There it is. Got one. Boom. So anyway, that's what I did. I got there way too early. I had to sit in the dark on the side of the river and then I could start seeing stuff. And then the camera that I had set on the tripod which was so many sucks in low light. And the camera couldn't see anything. So I, I waited as long as I could and I started casting and caught a few fish. But not the steelhead I was after. But anyway, what do we have going on here? A new day. This is titled Dear Steve. This is not my story, but my significant other and I spent a great deal of time in this area on the ONF. After watching your channel for about a year now, I've become hyper aware of my surroundings when in the forest. I recall you recently had a story slash encounter sent in from someone in the area of Hot Springs, Arkansas telling of being in some logging roads and encountering one of these creatures. So I thought I would share this with you as a sort of a follow-up to that story. Only this encounter is much further north between Ozark, Arkansas and St. Paul, Arkansas. Thanks for all you do, Jeremy. All right, and there's a couple of drawings here. The typical description, right? Added into it. Following our story earlier in the month concerning the sighting of a Bigfoot-like creature in northwest Crawford County, today in Fort Smith has had numerous contacts with readers about various similar sightings. Many of the people who have contacted us are making light of the situation trying to troll these those making the claims. Many are doing so in an attempt to be humorous, and a few of them are credible in both the telling and context of the story, but every now, but every now and then. A Greenwood woman claims she saw Bigfoot while hiking Saturday, August 8th in the Ozark National Forest near Turner Bend. Jane, that's in quotes, says she spotted the eight foot tall beast standing at the tree line near the Campbell Cemetery sign. Quote, all I kept hearing was a low growl that sounded like a human crossed with a coyote. The sound was frightening, Jane explained. My family's in good spirits as we were out hiking to take advantage of the beautiful weather, says Jane, but we finished the day pretty shaken up after the sighting. Jane described the creature as having lots of brown hair and looked part human and part bear. Jane and her family cl claimed to have spotted the Bigfoot about 30 yards off near the tree line, but within seconds the beast disappeared into the forest. The most frightening part of the encounter, according to Jane, was how quiet the forest became before and during the encounter. Quote, the forest was so quiet, unnaturally quiet, 
There were no singing birds, no movement in the forest. The wind wasn't blowing and everything was dead quiet. All I could hear was my heartbeat, says Jane. Jane and her family told today in Fort Smith they will not return to the Ozark National Forest again to hike. It's just too dangerous, a sincere sounding Jane said. Something lives out there and it isn't natural. I never want to see it again. There you go. More members of the club. I don't know whose drawing this is. I could have, I could have used it for a thumbnail for the video. I don't know, but or even if you guys could even see it there. More members of the club. Every single day, right? Every single day. Here's another one. Here's another one. Steve, I want to applaud you for what you've done with the YouTube channel and book. You have helped so many people. You have no idea how many. Awesome work. Greatly honored that when I got your book, my experience was published. I never imagined that I would that would happen in my life. Thank you. And I hope it helps someone sincerely. Now to the sixth sense. You've brought up several times about the sixth sense, and I agree with you 100%. I wanted to give my input on what I've discovered over the years of hunting or hiking, just being in the wild. It is having a feeling of being watched by something or someone in the woods. Sometimes I think it's a feeling, but it seems to be more of an oppression. For example, when in the woods have that feeling that I am being watched, I take that feeling and I turn it into receiving a directed energy. Then I scan the woods and my surroundings visually. More than 90% of the time, all that will be seen is a deer, coyote, etc. Staring at me 10% of the time, I don't see anything. That's when the uneasy sense escalates. Such as, I'm not the hunter, but I'm the prey. This enhanced sixth sense started to happen after my encounter with being attacked on the ATV. In the previous statement that I sent to you, that, that you aired on YouTube in, and in your book, page 176. After watching all your videos and reading the book, I have analyzed all the stories breaking down the similarities on most of the incidents, including my own. How everyone is uneasy to go back into the woods. But I have used this enhancement to be able to return to what I love, which is nature. Along with that, I take notes for mental notes Sorry, I take notes or mental notes every time I go into the woods. The uneasy feelings, as you say, gut feelings. To go with your instincts, even in everyday decisions. Something I've discovered over the years. For example, if I've been in society for a longer period than I desire and then go into nature, not in tune with the environment because it takes time to tune back into the natural realm, sometimes it takes days depending on where my mind is, at, to disengage with everyday social events. Events. In reverse, after being in nature for a long period of time and returning into society, it is hard to readjust, such as work, large crowds of people, cities and airports, etc., which you would understand of all people, lol. Most people that are outdoorsmen would understand that. People that have had the terrifying experience with the creatures slash creatures are traumatized in which it would be labeled as PTSD. Not being able to talk about these encounters, being scoffed at, laughed at, or being put into a mental institution in which is used against people with these encounters by the powers that be. That does not want the truth to be known. Now it can be thanks to you, Scott and David. This is a major milestone. Now that we all have banded together as every story is read on your YouTube channel, I must say what experiences that you have read, not all is being told out of fear as I didn't state in my story that was sent. I feel now that everything should be stated from the smallest things to the silliest things and to the craziest sounding things of everyone's experiences. Examples being zapped sick feeling, confusion, overwhelming fear, loss of time, unusual lights and sounds, radio communica communication being disrupted, and electronic equipment failure. This is a form of energy of the unknown. This needs to be addressed because it is 
connected to our sixth, sixth sense, which God has given us, all of us. Because of a lot of times our domestic animals, dogs, horses, house cats, etc., react before we do on our sixth sense. The animals know before earthquakes, tsunamis, and tornadoes. I've noticed that's why I keep my German shepherds with me in the woods. When something's bothering them, I take notice. What I'm getting at is I've been analyzing all these experiences, and you're being flooded with all the emails on this topic, the similarities of these incidents with these good people that have been living in fear of ridicule, such as in analyzing, such as analyzing time, location, temperatures, Barama bar sorry, barometric pressure, which affects the body, and other anomalies, etc. Every detail and comparing them, that may give us some answers and information that is not recorded and documented. There are plenty of footprints, molded and photographed of these beings, which you have stated many times. We have DNA now, just trying to compile all information from the people's encounters and take that data and use it. We're all missing something here, I personally feel. People's encounters have changed their lives, including my own. Apparently, we are not going to get answers or truths from the powers that be. Just exploited and disinformation. <clears throat> Steve, I'm not asking you to do this and take it upon yourself. You're way too busy and have enough going on. Roll it around in your head. How can we form a special selection of like-minded people in a chat room without bullshit or hurt feelings? Maybe there is one already established. If there is, I'd love to know about it and be part of it. So there can be discussions and comparison of information that could be helpful to all. We all have something in common. We want the truth. We want answers. And some do need true help dealing with their encounters. Peace of mind. Feel free to air this if you'd like. To your option or forward this email to David Plash Scott Carpenter. Note I am looking for note, I'm not looking for fame or monetary gain, just facts. Thank you again for what you're doing. Okay man, sorry it took so long to get to this. Obviously it took a while. I'm guessing. But there you go. Let's have some input in the comment section below this video, shall we? And see what the people think. Here comes another one. It's endless. It's endless. Hello, Steve. I'm a subscriber to your YouTube channel. I just want to extend my appreciation to what you're doing for the Sasquatch community. It is about time that we have a voice that stands for truth. Keep up the good work. These stories aren't so much about actual encounters. They consist of odd things that I feel are tied into this old, age-old mystery. Okay, on to my stories. I live in a small rural town in Missouri, and the area of Missouri that I reside in would be the last area you would expect to see these beings, but here we are. When I was eight years old, my family wasn't well off, so we lived in a mobile home park. My mom, my sister, and I were sitting one night just watching TV. This was late at night. We hear a blood-curdling scream, almost like a woman, but it didn't sound human. We take a step outside, look around. There, by the community dumpster, stood this white, hairy being. It was on two legs, and it was big. Its arms hung to its knees and had very broad shoulders. I didn't get to witness it for very long, as it must have noticed us, because it turned and walked off, still on two legs, down a steep hill that led down to the woods. It seemed to float almost. There wasn't any of the bobbing that the human gait has. Fast forward 23 years, and I have another odd thing happen. I was hiking through one of our state parks. I came upon a tree that had a rock hanging in it. The rock had a hole in the center, and it had a tree limb stuck through it. It had, it had to have hung at least 10 feet off the ground. It was not on a well-worn trail. I can't see anyone dragging a ladder all the way out here, out where it was just to hang a rock. To we what end? I just found it extremely odd. I continued my journey down into the riverbeds as they had been dry, and I wanted to look for arrowheads and shells. 
I came across a rock formation that had 10 to 12 rocks stacked up, going from big to small in a kind of pyramid shape. I just took a mental note and again I carried on. After a while of walking, I caught a stench in the air that could only be one thing, decay. Sure enough, as around the bend, there on the shoreline lay a dead, laid a dead deer. Nothing too out of the ordinary in itself, but here's the thing. Its leg had been broken. The way it was broke, it looked like something had grabbed the leg and twisted in a spiral motion. Imagine taking a towel and wringing it out to get water. Sorry, to get water out. That kind of motion. That wasn't the only anomaly. Its hide had been peeled back, not cut. There was no obvious wounds from normal predators. The only predators in our ecosystem are coyotes, and maybe the rare black bear. No bullet wound, no signs of anything you would normally expect. I don't know of any natural predators that would do that. After that, I tried to continue, but I kept feeling like I was being watched, so I hightailed it out of there as it was getting late. Then there was a time I was coming home late at night from work and I turned down a road that went over an overpass. As I did, my headlights caught the image of something with blackish gray hair. I only got to see from maybe just above the knees down before it ran down the hill on two legs. This encounter was in town, but the town is right next to the same state park. I've heard wood knocks while fishing and hiking. I found a rather large footprint once. It was in the middle of nowhere and it was followed by wood knocks. I thought it would be funny and knock back. Then I got a response. This time it was closer. Each time I responded, it did too. Closer every time. Then it just stopped. It makes me wonder if it saw me and realized I wasn't one of them. I guess I'll never know. Anyway, those are my strange encounters from Missouri. Thanks again for what you're doing. Looking forward to more videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. P.S. You should check out a book called Everything You Know Is Wrong by Lloyd Pye. He, like you, takes a no-nonsense approach to the Sasquatch theme. He explains how the Sasquatch might tie into the origins of man. At the very least, he'll give you something to ponder. All right. Thanks for that suggestion. Suggestion, sorry. And I appreciate you saying that, sending in that email. You're not the only one who's seen a white being of that description. Definitely not the only one. And I believe there is a very clear video of one online, which I do believe that channel Thinker Thunker, maybe MK Davis as well, basically uh, backed up that that white being was more than likely authentic, as, it, as in it was an authentic, white, unknown, human-like being. And spookier than shit to see the video. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat again. Excuse me. So if anybody out there has seen the same thing in the same area and you've been waiting to hear if maybe somebody else has, well you just heard it. And maybe you want to talk about what you know. Hopefully. Mark, this is Fred. Hello, Steve. Thank you for your channel. It's taught me very much. Here's my story. I'm an avid mountain bike rider. Back in July 95, Sue, my girlfriend at the time, and I took a mountain bike camping vacation from California to Moab, Utah. We had set up camp in the middle of the Moab Desert. The Moab Desert, sorry. We were alone as far as you could see, and you could see across the desert with no obstructions for 360 degrees for 20 to 50 plus miles. We rode our bikes during the day and slept in the tent at night. One night, about an hour into our sleep, we were woken up by something that my brain would not let me accept at the time. We could hear something walking up to our tent and around the general area. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the time, we whispered to each other, what the hell is that? The steps were from a two-legged animal, but the amount of noise 
the crushed rock was making was equivalent to a large truck. It was equivalent a large truck would make driving on a crushed rock road each time it stepped. You could hear it walking towards the tent, and with just a few steps, it was inches from the tent. At first we thought maybe it was a person. No, it's much too big. Maybe a bear. No, it would be walking. It would not be walking with only two legs. And with what sounded like six foot long steps, and believe it or not, not heavy enough. It had to have been at least six to eight hundred pounds by the noise it was making with each step. We were almost frozen with fear as each move we made impaired our hearing, impaired our hearing the being, the only sense we had to monitor this large creature. The fear and hopelessness we felt was off the charts as we heard it slowly step towards our tent get to within a foot within 20 seconds and then stayed there for 10 to 20 minutes then walked around the campsite for another 10 minutes then left we couldn't sleep for hours it's been 25 years but i remember it right but I, sorry it's been 25 years but i remember it right we pulled up stakes and left the desert the next day. The previous nights before, we would sleep at night. My girlfriend, librarian slash teacher, Sue, who was half Sioux Indian, would question whether I had to sleep with my Beretta 9mm under my pillow at night when we camped. After that, every night she religiously asked, Mark, is the Beretta under your pillow? It just took a few minutes for her to see the value in a closely positioned handgun. However, little did we know, it would have been a very limited help. I remember the next morning we did, we did talk about it. Sue said a few things about it. Might be a Sasquatch, as the Indians believe in them. At the time, I was just confused, but in hindsight, it's the only answer to what we experienced. But for the most part, what we experienced didn't compute. After discussing it, we pretty much concluded we didn't know what the hell it was, but it was frickin' big. And we're lucky we are still alive. A couple minor typos. I'm a little rough reading right now. I don't know why. It's been 25 years, but your channel made me think back, realize and accept that what we heard had to have been one of these beings. As a matter of fact, a few months back, when it came to this realization, I wanted to reach out and ask Sue if she ever realized, like I did, what we have heard, but, but sadly, she passed away last year from brain cancer. Oh, that sucks. Sorry to hear that, man. She was very spiritual and taught on an Indian reservation for a few years. So when I think back, I think maybe the being sensed her spirit and wanted to get close to her. I believe this to be true as I have never come close to meeting a person with such a deep soul or made a greater impact on me. You can use my name or contact me. I know my story is not much compared to what you have read, but it means a lot to me relative to me believing in these beings and why if I ever camp, it's in an SUV, not a tent. Best regards, Mark Rohr. Mark, appreciate appreciate that email, man. I'm sorry about losing your, your friend. That really sucks. And who knows? I don't know. Was she attract was this being attracted to her? Maybe. I don't know. But you know, to be honest, I, I shared my feelings on that a little while back. From what I've been hearing from all the people, it doesn't it doesn't seem to matter who you are. <laughs> it just doesn't. Not by race, where you live, what you do. It just doesn't seem to matter. Everybody seems to be getting the equal treatment, right? In a way. Some are screamed at, some aren't. Some get rocks thrown at them. Some just, lots of tents have visitors walking up to and standing there, walking around them. Sometimes even peeing on the tent, poking fingers in, pressing faces in the tent, throwing pine cones on the tent. All sorts of shit goes on with the tents, which is unfortunate, right? For a lot of people, a little nerve-wracking. 
hence the SUV camping, right? And another, another member. This is titled Texas. Hi Steve. I decided to write for some feedback and not so much to be mentioned on the channel. If you choose to do so, then that's fine too. You're in now. I've been interested, interested in this subject for a few years now and eventually learned of some encounters that occurred in and around Government Canyon State Park, especially the 911 call made years ago by a homeless couple before the area was developed, which is still on YouTube, and what led to the Rick Dyer situation. He's, of course, been an accused hoaxer, but I do know for sure that real things have happened aside from that. I eventually had a strange experience of my own during a hike before this pandemic started. Coming to the last two miles of an eight mile group hike, a weird squeeze toy type sound came from the thick brush that's between the trail and some cliffs. I glanced over and then to my rear, which a mother and her son both acknowledged with a shrug and a look of confusion. So we pressed forward a few yards and then a loud thud to the front of me stopped me in my tracks. It was not only loud, but it could be also felt through the ground. All three of us remained in place, glancing around for a good two minutes, wondering what it was. It didn't take much sense. It didn't make much sense to me until I heard an episode of Sasquatch Chronicles related describe something very similar. A good friend that recently moved back home from Houston told me that in 2005 or 6, when the park was newly opened, something paralleled her and her boyfriend at the time. She said it was big, and you could hear it, though it was not visible. She recalls being completely freaked out, and they immediately trekked back to the vehicle and left. I'm curious if you have had anyone else write to you about this part of San Antonio, Texas. Thanks, Cliff. All right, there you go. The question is out there, Cliff. Shared. Along with your email. Shared, shared, shared. <laughs> Anybody familiar with San Antonio and something going down? And you want to share it? Throw it down in the comment section below, right? Unless it's longer and more detailed and you want it heard here through me, you can do that too. That's share my story at howtohunt.com. Okay, one more. And then i got to go in and eat and get out. I'm, I'm wet and <laughs> I'm cold. It's uncomfortable, and I might come back out after I have a shower and share some more. I'll get this one more short one done. Hello, Steve. Just started watching you a few weeks ago. My name is Ryan. I've hunted fish, rode horses, and worked on ranches in Idaho. I've hunted the Frank Church, Boulder White Clouds, Sawtooth Mountain, and many others. I'm an accomplished archer. I've won several state championships and placed in the top 10 of a few national com competitions. My friend, works for the Forest Service, so he is in the woods all the time and has won a few national competitions and a lot of state competitions in archery. I trust him with my life. He was on his way to Idaho from Montana with his fiance when they stopped to let the three dogs out to use the restroom when he noticed it across the river, walking up a long steep hill. He grabbed binoculars and watched it walk up the hill for about 400 yards in about a minute and a half. It was just strolling up the hill. He told me, I do not believe in Bigfoot, but I know what I've seen. His fiance had the exact same stare. I myself have not seen one, but on a few occasions have got that feeling of being watched in the woods. I can only, I can only to sixth sense. I do not need to see one to know they exist. Thanks for what you do. Keep up the good work. If I ever get up to BC, I'll look you up. All right. There you go. Thanks for that, Ryan. That's awesome how you've accomplished your archery skills. I love hearing that. There you go. Right? More people didn't ask for it, saw it anyway. For us to acknowledge it and bravely came forward about it. Thank God. One more. Chris here from Oregon. Thanks for what you're doing here. So back about 15 years ago, I had my encounter with this thing. 
I was up for a wheeling in my Toyota by myself, which I never do due to the fact of something going wrong. But this night I went solo. I was on a wildcat. I was on Wildcat Mountain, driving a trail that went from what we call West Wildcat to East Wildcat, which I'd been on a shitload of time. The trail was a mix of old logging roads and old Forest Service roads, and it wasn't that difficult of a trail with 42-inch tires on my Toyota. Well, on this trail, there was an old timber bridge that was taken out, so I had to drop down it, but come back up the other side. But that's when I got stuck due to the snow-covered rocks. So I shot my truck off, got out, and put my winch in neutral and pulled the cable up to a tree. It was snowing out, and the wind was blowing out of the west, and that's when a rock the size of a football or a little bigger went flying over my truck from the passenger side to the driver's side. I thought, what the hell was that? Was someone messing with me up here? So I got back down to my truck, put the winch back in gear, and that's when another rock was flying over. It was getting dark and even darker in the trees, so I could see who or what was doing it. I think he must have meant I couldn't see who or, who or what was doing it. At this point, I'm kind of freaked out. So I got my truck, started back up, and pulled myself up the steep embankment, got out, and unhooked the cable, and that's when this big-ass tree branch gets thrown down like a javelin right at my truck from the east against the wind, just missing my truck. I got back in my truck and got the hell out of there. I think this thing was trying to scare me out of its territory, and it sure worked. I've never drove that trail again. I never told none of my buddies about due to the fact they would think I'm crazy. I was going to stop. I was going to stop by this Bigfoot museum slash roadside tourist trap that was put in down, put in down the road from my house. But found out it's ran by one of the freaks from finding Bigfoot, so I didn't want to waste my time. Well, thanks again for what you're doing, getting the word out, Chris. Chris, thanks for sending that in. And that's a shit eater, right? I've been broken down in the middle of nowhere more than a few times, and it sucks. <laughs> Especially when you got to crawl underneath your vehicle too, right? Just for me anyway, when you know what's up. And you're crawling under the truck and you kind of think to yourself, man, I hope something absolutely ridiculous doesn't happen right now because I'm just not into it. <laughs> right? Please leave me alone. Anyway, i got to go in to get a shower and get changed. I smell like fish. <laughs> my feet are wet. And uh, I think I'm wet up to my knees, actually. i got to get some new waders. And then I'm going to come back and continue on with this. we go. Full tummy, hot shower, <laughs> clean clothes. It's funny, doesn't matter where you are or what you're wearing. You lose your feet, you lose everything. The feet get cold, your body gets cold. <laughs> it's so weird. Always take care of your feet, especially when you're in remote woods backpacking. And you're a long ways from the old heater in the truck <laughs> or, or a wood stove in a cabin or whatever, right? You lose your feet, you lose it all. It sucks. Now, I think I'll be reading a little smoother now, hopefully. I hate it when I don't read smooth. Here we go. Good afternoon. My name is Shane. For the past two or three years, I've been watching your channel, as well as Missing 411. And I find both to be compelling, interesting, and mysterious. I've always liked a good challenge in trying to figure out things that don't make sense or are out of the ordinary. I cannot figure out the Missing 11 mysteries at all. I have no clue. I've always believed in the paranormal, and I don't pay attention to what the majority of people believe, because at one point, People believe the earth was flat, and that one walk off the earth, and now we have globes. I love being outdoors, but I have to admit, I don't spend the amount of time in wildlife that I would like to. 
I've fished before. I'm not a true fisherman. And I've never hunted. I've never really gone camping either. At the time I was 5'9", 220 pounds of solid muscle. Not what I said, what everyone around me, not what I said, what everyone around me told me. I also have very little fear of anything that breathes like I breathe. On to my actual experience. My ex-girlfriend, her little brother and I, all went to Humpback Rock in Virginia. People go there because of the awesome views on the cliff that is called Humpback Rock. It's about one mile up the mountain. We lived about an hour and a half from there. On the ride up to the mountain, I kept joking with a brother about a mysterious character named Uug. O-U-U-G. O-Triple-U-G. We all knew I was just playing and even laughed at me and my games. At the time, he was around six or seven years old. We got there in decent time to walk up the side of the mountain and get an amazing view. It was early November and the leaves covered the ground, so we could easily hear if, some, hear if someone, if they were close to us. We descended the mountain. It was getting dark, but it wasn't dark yet. We were all quietly walking down the trail. It was extremely quiet until literally out of nowhere, we all heard a sound. I can't remember the actual sound as I was focused on where it came from. All three of us snapped our heads to about 50 feet off the trail to where the sound came from. I personally saw something white go up and come back down. That's literally all I saw. I could not identify what it was, but I saw how petrified my ex and her brother looked. I figured if it was some type of animal, we all had a mutual feeling of anticipation. I told them to run, thinking if it was going to run, it would run into me and not them. I'd let them get about 15 feet from me and, and I, I would let them get about 15 feet from me and I would catch right up to them. We did this down the entire mountain back to the car. Of course, on the ride back, I got blamed for summoning unknown creatures with my Uwug joke. Years later, she told me what she saw. She said there were at least four of them. They were all different colors. Their eyes were red, and they were all looking in our direction. She's from the more rural part of South Carolina and knows wildlife far more than I do. She grew up skinning and hunting deer in the woods of South Carolina. The fact that she could not recognize whatever it was made me think of your channel. I realize this isn't the most compelling story you've read, know about or experience, but it is the only story I have thus far. Okay, man, gotcha. We're picking it up, sort of, mostly. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're, we're lacking in the description part of what she saw. So we got four of them, different colors of red eyes. So, was there hair involved? Was there face? Were they human-like, but not human? You know what I mean? There's a few gaps there, but we got gotcha. you. The location of what you saw, we got gotcha. you. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Okay, here goes one more. One more, and then I get going. Get into the editing part of it, which is a pain in the butt right now. I don't know what to do. New computer again? I don't know. First of all, I'd like to thank you for all the time you spent preparing these videos and not being afraid to tell your stories on this topic. My name is Seth from Virginia, and I am a full-time house builder. This experience occurred when I was 17. I was born and raised south of Richmond, but grew up fishing and hunting my whole life in between. Buckingham and Chesterfield counties, and my hunting club has around 2,800 acres with most being pine forest and pine cutover. Currently, I am 22 years old and this memory stays livid in my mind. A fellow member of the, of the hunt club, who we will call Will, and his buddy Dill, fake names of course because I don't have permission for their names, had a couple of beagle puppies. We were training four beagle puppies he had recently got for chasing our only species of deer, white tails. We dropped his dogs on a doe we had seen from the road and let the puppies and the one adult beagle give chase. It started to follow them, watching them, 
on the GPS trackers. We had planned on catching them as soon as they crossed the first road. All we wanted was to give them an idea of what to do before the deer season came in. Before we get antsy about it, we've used deer dogs at my hunt club for many, many years before my time, and we take very good care of our dogs. All we use are beagles to keep the deer from being too pressured. Back to my story. We dropped the dogs and began following them along the road. The dogs were going down the road, paralleling the road, headed straight down from headed straight down our property. The GPS trackers we were using were Garmin and we had a large antenna on the top of the truck to get better readings and could track the dogs for miles further than the handheld GPS's could transmit. I'm not sure if you would be experienced much with the GPS trackers but the antenna was at the bottom about one and a half inches thick and stretching up about four feet high. Okay, so it's all paragraphs, but it doesn't, the sentences don't end in the paragraphs, okay? So that's why you might catch me being a little awkward. Sorry. Riding down the road, we started hearing ding, 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 ding. I ignored it, thinking it was the truck rattling somehow. Then it happened again. Ding, ding, ding. Once again, I ignored it and didn't say anything. A few minutes later, as we were still chasing the dogs, paralleling our road, it starts again. Ding, ding, ding. Will then stops the truck and jumps out and says, what the F is this? I was just sitting in the passenger seat and I jumped out the window and sat on the opening looking over the truck. You Note know, the antenna is not even in anyone's mind. It was sitting perfectly still as it should have been. And all of a sudden, right in front of my own eyes, with Will looking at me and the antenna being in between us, the antenna rocked back and forth violently. It rocked back and forth with force and never made the truck rock a single time. The truck never budged side to side, front or back. We were perfectly still. In the midst of the antenna rocking, we heard multiple very high-pitched shrieks. We had no idea what made the noise. It was high-pitched shrieks, not screams, not yelling. Shrieks I've never heard before or since that late summer night. We thought mountain lion, but we don't have those around here, and that didn't explain the freaking antenna rocking. It's so hard to put it in words how vividly I watched it go from sitting perfectly still to rocking back and forth. Will Dill and I were dumbfounded. We tried rocking the antenna by pushing and jumping on the truck. Not close to what it did. We grabbed the antenna and shook it from the base. We couldn't get it to move one third of the distance that it rocked without being touched. We jumped back in the truck, freaked out. <clears throat> Excuse me. We ended up catching the puppies around 30 minutes later and went back to the club for the night. We've talked about that night a few times since then and we have no explanation for what happened. I'm not very experienced with research in the topic and I've never gone out in search for them. With this said, I've seen many cases of people telling their story and seeing things happen or seeing things with slash around these beings. I never saw no figure. I never saw whatever did this. I just know that when something is shrieking at you, and you have something man-made doing something unnatural to the laws of physics, then shit is going down. Every person I've ever told this story to has laughed at me and asked how much I smoked while we were out there on our dirt roads chasing our dogs. But one day, you'll get around to and reading this email. I'd love to create and send you a video of the exact spots where this incident happened. I'll go there. I go there all the time because there's no way around it on our main Club Road. Thank you, and please use my name and state to help show how unexplainable events are happening all around us, and the people are unaware. Okay, man, I appreciate that. That's a creepy freaking experience. I don't think we've had, we have definitely haven't had an antenna mailed in, not to me. I would have remembered that. <clears throat> we've had a lot of people email in about trees and branches getting shook violently. For sure. The only one first town I know of in my hood 
would be on the past north of Whistler, where some hikers noted a Christmas tree-sized tree shaking absolutely violently. And they saw um, big, hairy, reddish-brown hair-covered legs behind the tree underneath. They could see underneath just the legs. That was it. So, I don't know. I haven't heard of an antenna doing that yet myself. Does it surprise me? Pfft, nothing surprises me. Nothing. You can't surprise me at this stage of the game. No way. You just can't. Now, that's all the emails I'm going to share today. Because I have a lot of chores to do, I've been told. <laughs> but I want to share something with you guys before I go. If I can find which one it was. Where was it? Being among young people over the past six months to a year following the COVID-19 vaccine. Heck, we just had the Nobel Prize awarded uh, to individuals related to the COVID All right. vaccine. All right, so this is the Rumble video. Redacted news. Rumble video. October 4th, 2023. All right, it says here it was loaded 19 hours ago. If you would, if you could, please listen to this video. All right, there's some medical professionals in there sharing absolute valuable information that the world needs to know. Okay, so I'm taking my moment out to share that with you. That's the Redacted News Channel. All right. And uh, October 4th, 2023, and I believe there's a very, very valuable messages are in that video. They couldn't load this video onto the YouTube channel because you're not allowed to talk about some things on YouTube, all right? So it's on the Rumble channel. I was going to let it play right here, the important parts, and Sarah cautioned against it because she feels that this channel and all of you will be taken away in an instant, so there you go. I'll put a link to that video in the description below this video, all right? So there, very, very important. No matter what side of the... What side of the fence you're on when it comes to anything to do with your health, I don't give a flying shit. Just make sure that you're big enough to listen to everybody. Quit being a pussy if you aren't. Right? Whoever taught people it's okay to shut people up, it's wrong. Just hear them out. People share information like this because they care. They're not trying to do something bad to you. Right? Isn't that amazing when you when you hear about the truth the tellers and how some people react towards them? People share a truth because they care about you. That's the only reason they do it. They get nothing to gain from it. They're not doing anything bad at all. Truth, people that share truth are not doing anything bad to anybody at all. It's so weird to watch how some people react to that by screaming, plugging their ears, stomping their feet on the ground, not letting them say one word, I'm not listening, no, 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 you know what I mean? It's weird. How have so many people become so programmed in the wrong direction? I don't get it. Anyways, I'm going to stop myself there. There's, there's the video. I urge you all to listen to it. And I'll put the link in the description below. And I'll be back again. And furthermore, what I think, I think each time I go out, I'm going to try to get into more of a habit of using my drone. It's a valuable piece of, it's a valuable tool. And it creates a lot of real cool shit. And I have to get back into it and do it daily. When I do do it, I'm going to share what I see in each video with you guys. All right, so I'll share on this video. I'll maybe already share it at the beginning or at the end. I'll share what I saw today. All right, now share my story at howtohunt.com. Get it off your chest, get it out in the open, share it. You found your people.